Welcome to the wide world of esports, a show devoted to all things esports. I'm your host, Catherine Noor. Sadly, this is my last show, and I'm really excited to share with you the last four years of this adventure that we've had. We're going to talk about shows that I've really enjoyed, what we've learned, and uh, hopefully you'll be inspired to go to our YouTube channel at Think Tech Hawaii and take a look at these shows because I think you'll be as delighted as I was when you hear what these guests have to say. So let's talk about the best of the wide world of esports, but also talk about the journey of how we got there. And let's go back to 2019. Think of before the COVID-19 pandemic. You know, esports wasn't really on my radar. And then I got an email from NBI asking me to speak at, actually go to their NBA, NBI headquarters, National Bus Business Institute, and actually do a sem seminar on esports law in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. And this picture is actually of me doing that. But, you know, I hadn't thought of the show yet. And at the time I was hosting the show um, much more on medicine. And, but what's really interesting and memorable about this situation and that's worth telling you about is that if you remember what was going on in March um, of 2020, the world was slowly shutting down because of COVID-19. And my building in Hawaii had, had actually become the regional COVID-19 testing center. And to get in the building, I had to pass people in hazmat suits that took our temperatures, and that was pretty strange. So I thought I'm better off flying to uh, Minneapolis and, and driving to Wisconsin to present this um, webinar in person, uh, which I did. And what was really interesting about it, as I, as I traveled, the states were shutting down as I left the state. Many, uh, Minnesota, the governor issued an order closing down um, Minnesota right as I drove out. And then as after I presented at this webinar, um, it was an all-day thing and the other attorneys couldn't show up because they were they were their states and travel was shut down. And as I was driving out of Wisconsin, Wisconsin shut down as well. And then I was hearing news that I might have to quarantine when I got back to Hawaii. Well, if you recall, traditional sports was shutting down too. And what did that mean for esports? Esports, you don't have to go outside. You don't have to, you can sit at your computer and, and do it remotely. So that was kind of a opportunity for me to learn even more about esports and to watch lots of webinars and and really engage myself in the esports community. And I was kind of thinking about an esports show and replacing much more in medicine with the wide world of esports. I hadn't come up with the name yet. And then I, I watched a webinar and Major General Frank Muth was talking about US Army esports. Well, I'd never heard of that. So I mess I found him on LinkedIn and I messaged him and I said, if I had a show about esports, would you be a guest? And he responded and he said, absolutely, I would be happy to. And then I pitched the show, The Wide World of Esports, to our president, Jay Fidel, uh, Think Tech Hawaii. And uh, he said, yeah. First show was in um, July of 2020. Major Frank. Uh, Major General Frank Muth was extremely interesting. We learned a lot from him, and it was a very popular show. Uh, we learned that U.S. Army esports had a team, and that they started that team to help recruit 
help have conversation with people about the army, not necessarily to recruit, but at least to get the conversation started. They were, they would, rather than, than going to malls to recruit uh, people, they, they got, they kind of infiltrated esports and talked to them about it. And at one point, 8,000 soldiers signed up for 16 positions on the team. Um, and Major General Frank Muth explains that esports skill sets are the same that they need in the Army, and that's why they use esports to recruit members. And interestingly enough, I heard that other branches of the military also um, started esports teams after that. And I did have intentions to ultimately talk to them, but no time now. But um, uh, actually, um, that was an incredibly memory, me memorable show. So over the years, I've talked to over 100 guests, well over 100 guests. And there are many that, you know, um, come to mind. And um, next slide, please. These are just some of the pictures of the fantastic guests that I've talked to. But in addition to these wonderful people that I feel became friends, um, I wanted to mention a few that, that I think are particularly worthy of mentioning. April Welch, she, we did a Star Wars day because she, in her basement, she had memorabilia of Star Wars. And she showed us around her basement and we learned all about uh, what she had for Star Wars. We kind of celebrated Star Wars on that show. Another um, one that I really think is worth um, mentioning is it was, I think, one of my first shows. It was called Arcade Blaster. It was uh, about this really cool um, arcade blaster that you use to control uh, gaming. And that was um, Joel. Um, Joel is the, the gentleman's name. I can't remember his last name for some reason. Court, Joel Court, I think. Um, Heather Blair, she talked about cinema, cinema esports. And I always think about that show because I always think that we really should be putting esports competitions in movie theater. And I tell people about her all the time. And then one of my favorites was esports in Hollywood, um, where I interviewed Jay Moses and Kim Moses, who were bringing esports to Hollywood in the form of productions and movies and possibly a TV show. And then there was Psych Sensei and Gamer Doc and Hado and the Metaverse. And then there was lawyers that I interviewed about legal issues and insurance esports insurance. You wouldn't think that would be very interesting, but it was. Um, so there were all these fun shows. So I really encourage you to watch them. They're all on YouTube. You can, um, they're also on thinktechhawaii.com. Uh, find them and take a look. Um, then, uh, next slide. Um, I've promoted many businesses and entrepreneurs on the show. And what I was trying to do with the show, it wasn't put anyone on the spot. What I wanted to do with the show is promote people and what they were doing in gaming and competitive esports. And these are only a few of the logos. There are many, but um, and, you know, I, I, I don't know if all of the businesses that I promoted on my show are still going um, strong, but some of them are, or actually probably a lot of them are. Um, and then let's look at Hawaii. I mean, uh, Think Tech Hawaii, obviously we're in Hawaii and um, there's been a lot of, there have been a lot of shows with Hawaii guests and we've learned a lot about what's going on in the esports scene in Hawaii. I had the opportunity to interview um, Senator uh, Glenn Wakai early on, and I've really enjoyed watching what he's doing for our state and for um, everything, in, in including esports. And um, 
uh, Dr. Sky uh, Kau Veloa, um, he he wasn't a, he didn't have his PhD um, in communications, focusing on e-sports. When we when I interviewed him a few times early on, but then he earned it over the years, and he he's a big name in e-sports. I interviewed a lot of coaches, a shoutcaster. I recently interviewed Ed Lallier with Vanta, and they're doing some amazing things. Turned out that Micah Medeiros, he's a neighbor of mine, and I didn't know that, and I had him on the show, um, and many others. It's just been a really exciting um, uh, opportunity to learn about Hawaii. And we also learned that the um, Overwatch League during COVID, they uh, came to UH and held a uh, competition. Uh, a championship competition, and it, it brought UH into the international scene. Um, so, and recently, HBU had an invitational that was really exciting, and Ed Lallier talked about that. Um, and next, I've interviewed many esports educators, way more than I could ever put on on here. In fact, it got to the point where I was thinking I was interviewing. Um, educators more than anything else. And so I tried to find other people, but, you know, NASAF, North American Scholastic Esports Federation, that was a great show. Um, we learned all about every element of esports education from scholastic to collegiate. Um, and we, we even talked to Danny Martin of exposure and, um, you know, we really learned about the ecosystem and how um, there are so many possible jobs in esports that uh, so many ways that um, people can benefit from gaming in education. It entertains people. It keeps their interest. It um, kids are much more engaged. Um, there's there are so many games that are design for education. There's gamification that's really interesting. And what we're finding a little bit more is that um, that there's scholarship being offered for esports. There's more collegiate programs. I think last time I heard there's like 400. I'm sure there's way more than that. Um, and, you know, it's just growing exponentially. They even have degrees in esports. Um, so that's kind of an exciting thing. And next, you know, I actually talked to a number of authors who wrote books about esports. Um, one that isn't shown here is William Collis. That, that was like my second show. And then uh, Baro Wynn, um, Demystifying Esports, Justin Jacobson, he wrote um, the Essential Guide to the Business and Law of Esports and Professional Video Gaming. I always buy the books and read them. Um, I learn a lot from what these authors write. And they're doing really interesting things in esports. I actually follow them on LinkedIn, and I kind of follow their careers. And, um, and uh, you know, if, if you're interested in writing a book, uh, esports is definitely a topic. Um, they're there are there is room and a market for more books on esports. Now let's move to some of the most memorable shows, and uh, let me tell you the backstories about these. Let's talk about Whale Shark. Okay, this when people ask me what my very favorite show was, this is it. Well, Shark was my very most fascinating guest. Yes, he, I actually didn't know him or meet him in any way. I actually don't even know what his name is. He only appears as an avatar and by the pseudonym Whale Shark. Um, he had a PR person contact me and ask if um, I would have a show about their new luxury esports apparel elite. And, you know, I put them on the calendar and she told me that the my guest would be Whale Shark and that he only appears by Avatar. And 
and um, and he would not disclose his name. I have to tell you, I actually have watched this show over and over and over again <laughs> because Whale Shark is so fascinating. And it was the first time that I heard someone talking about the metaverse, the multiverse, NFTs, and and things that I wasn't that familiar with. But and he really talked about how they designed this clothing line for esports athletes so that you when you wore it you would feel really comfortable and look great when um you were gaming and they actually even sent me uh some clothes and they're just absolutely beautiful um so please watch this show if you're gonna if you're gonna watch one show this is it it's very very fun um the next one, there's a really interesting story behind it. It's Fatality. And you may know Fatality by his real name, which is Jonathan Wendell. And the backstory, and let me tell you a little bit about Fatality. He's a former professional um, esports player. And he, over his lifetime of, of competing, he won about almost a half million dollars um, playing Quake from 1999 to 2005. And you probably wonder how I got him on the show. Well, if you see the photo, I I was I spoke on a panel um at the um uh I think it was a casino esports conference and and this was our panel. I took a picture of us when we were talking and that uh, that was during COVID. That was in 2020. And we were actually supposed to go to Vegas and speak in person at the conference. And um, they, we couldn't because of shutdown because of COVID-19. And what they did is they had part of the conference um, held by Zoom type, a uh, Zoom type situation. The rest of it, you entered a virtual reality environment and you had an avatar and could walk around and go to um, presentations within the conference you could con communicate with people you could dance they had like a big place where you could dance you could order a drink at the bar it was really fun and when we were doing our um, panel we were talking to each other and um, fatality happened to mention that there was a watering hole that you could fish at. And I said, how do you find it? He said, when we're done, have your avatar follow my avatar and I'll show you and I'll show you how to fish. So when we were done, my avatar followed his. He showed me, you know, we went through the whole, the whole um, conference space and, and found the fishing hole. And then he showed me how to fish. And as you can see, actually, Ari Fox, Fatality, and I are fishing, and and we're talking, and he's Fatality's telling us, you know, stories and everything. And then I asked him, I said, I have a show called The Wide World of Esports. Would you be a guest on my show? And he said, sure. And that's how he ended up being a guest. And um, the next one was very popular. It was probably the one of the most popular shows. And I had um, Jack Tanvir on twice. Um, when he, this is probably maybe my fifth show or fourth show or something like that. And he was in India. India, And because Hawaii time is so different than Indians, um, he had to get up at like 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. And it was in the middle of the night for him. And you know, he, he told us about his um, team called Artemis and their tagline, gamers are never alone. And, and it, you know, he's just such a great guy. And, and you can really feel his passion for esports and, and for the people in, that he meets and that he brings into his team. Um, they're very... Um, it's it's a very tight knit group, and he's been really wonderful. I'm on his uh, 
gamers are never alone um uh facebook page and you know he lets me post my shows and he you know without even any approval i mean he's just terrific and he was so terrific that i just had him on a second time and and you know i'll always think of that as one of my favorite him as one of my favorite guests of all time now let's talk about hip hop gamer all right um Justin Jacobson referred me to his client, Hip Hop Gamer. And um, boy, he did not disappoint. That was really a fun show. And, you know, I have to tell you that a lot of times I do these shows and I every and when I after I do it, I go, oh, that was my favorite show. That was my favorite show. And this was definitely one of my favorites because Hip Hop Gamer was so much fun. I won't even spoil it for you. You have to go take a look at this great um uh show and learn about what hip hop gamer does and it's an example of how if you've got a vision of of um you know a segment of the esports population that you can capture you know he he he's created a great character and um i think he entertains people all over and now let's talk about a really important one. One of the most important was Dexter Carr Jr. All right. So this is another extremely memorable show that happened during COVID. Um, it was, I think it was my first show with Dexter Carr Jr. I actually ended up doing three shows with him as a guest. I think he was the holds the record as being my guest the most time. Anyway, what Dexter envisioned is his friend Aaron um, had a to do that same thing as do a virtual reality environment and that he would create a virtual and reality environment and that we would go in that and have the show kind of within that virtual environment. And we created our avatars, as you can see. Um, I'm hanging out with them in the virtual environment. Um, we, most of the show was me interviewing them as I always do, but we showed video of um, entering the virtual environment. We did things like ride speedboats. We played basketball. We um, danced. It was really fun dancing with these guys. And then I even went into one environment and interviewed Dexter Carr Jr about G Haven, his team. And he also has Game for Good. He he does a lot in esports. So we've had a number of topics to talk about. So any of the shows with Dexter are terrific, but this was particularly fun. And it's kind of embarrassing how like I wasn't that good at at uh doing some of the the uh stuff in the virtual uh, reality environment, but I learned, and and actually, you see me learning on the video. I would kind of get it wrong, or be the be the slowest to arrive on my speedboat, or or kind of not figure out how to dance properly. It was kind of hilarious, but it's worth worth seeing. Uh, next next one, I can't miss talking about Ari Fox. I think he was on three times as well. Actually, I think. He and Dexter probably tied for the most number of times that they appear. Um, Ari is always a good sport, doing a lot of uh, a lot of uh, conference um, uh, event planning, and uh, you know he he runs the Casino Esports Conference and other conferences as well. Great guy, and uh, worth hearing all about what he's doing. And uh, you know he has a lot of excitement for esports and and uh, a wonderful entrepreneur and then the next one i don't think anyone at think tech hawaii will forget um jeffrey weiss did um he had a company called esports circuit and you know he fit the part with his great hats and and uh and you know background and everything always a good guy who is on twice um talked about you know um different topic, but uh, the first one was eSports cir Circus, and, you know, he got he got the award for the best hat. 
And then the next one, Dr. Gregory Gettinger, who's in Vienna, Austria. Um, he is uh, the creator of Tennis Esports. And I really recommend that you play Tennis Esports using your, um, your uh, MetaQuest or whatever um, virtual reality um, environment type, type uh, um, uh, equipment you have. Um, he's doing some amazing things. You can find him on LinkedIn, um, Dr. Gregory Gettinger. And, uh, you know, they've been asked to be uh, an Olympic sport. We talked about that in our, one of our shows. Um, but I, you know, I couldn't, I could not do this show without at least mentioning him because that was an amazing um, show. It's an amazing um, activity, amazing game. You know, I, I think it has an incredible future. And then the next one, a more recent one, I always wanted to have a young person on the show. I wanted to have a teenager. And, but everything got in my way. Every time I had scheduled a teenager to be on the show, something happened. Well, Travis Smith was referred by another guest. And, um, you know, you kind of wonder how a teenager is going to do on the show. And he was fantastic. Very well, as, as well-spoken as any other guest. He was very poised. He was very professional. He did everything perfectly. When I emailed him, he got back with me right away. Super responsible guy. He has he has a team with 67 people on the team that he owns, and they're all older than him. It's kind of amazing. Um, uh, and you know he juggles. He, you know he juggles. Um, you know, schoolwork with, he plays basketball as well. And, and then at night he works on his business. He's got a great future in, in esports. And if you ever want to donate to any cause in esports, I suggest you find Travis Smith and uh, give him a donation and keep his, uh, his organization going. Um, and then we, I must talk about Tom Leonard. Tom Leonard, he is the, um, he runs the Gamers Changing Lives podcast, and you might have caught shows where he um, actually um, has been my substitute host, and he probably substituted it about four times, maybe, um, and he had, in his, um, pod, for his podcast, he employs people in Ghana, and they pretty much help him run his podcast and he only has people in developing countries um, as guests on his podcast and now that we're shutting down um, the wide world of esports if when you're done watching all the back shows you missed definitely um, uh, take a look at gamers changing lives and I thank Tom Leonard a lot for you know his work on it but before I move out of the, these shows, I have to mention, um, and I, I, I didn't include a picture, but Agregati Siegel, I, he was my guest. He spoke about secrets of building esports centers. And he was one of my favorite guests. And the reason why is he was a big fan of the wide world of esports. And he was so excited to be on the show. And I really appreciated um, Agregati jumping in and filling in a slot where we needed him. And, you know, so much useful information. And I just want to thank him for um, always being a fan. And um, next slide. And then, you know, I have to mention the Esports Trade Association. They've really been my the wind beneath my wings. If you're not a member, you've got to join. Because if you're doing anything in in the industry, you've got to join this group. It's amazing. Th this picture is with me and Lindsay Poss in, in uh, uh, Chicago at the conference uh, in 2023. 
where we were doing bead networking at this long table. And um, actually, I've had Lindsay as a guest on my show. I've had Megan Van Petten and so many others. But we'll move into the next slide and talk about some of those great guests. Um, here are some of the wonderful guests that I've had on my show. Um, uh, uh, John Cash, Jeremy Packer, Michaela Frank, Justin, um, uh, Megan Van Petten, uh, Dexter Card Jr. I hung out with these people. I met all these people in person after they were on my show. Next slide. And then here's some more of those. And and uh, um, I I don't think that there's a picture of John Davidson, but I have to mention his name. He's the president of Eastport's um, um, Great Association. And here you see in the middle, there's a picture of me and some other women, including um, uh, Danielle Johnson and April Welsh. And there's me and Danielle Johnson, who is the guest on my show, and Amila, who is also a guest, and Zach, Zachary, that was also a guest. Um, a lot of fun, a great opportunity to network if you really want to meet people in Eastport, the place to be. And their next conference is in June, in July, over July 4th weekend. And they're going to have a NASCAR um, opportunity. You get to watch NASCAR on Million Mile in Chicago. It's going to be really cool. So I've had shows talking about that as well. It's always fun. Next slide. And then, so what we've learned, okay, so esports has become an integral part of education at all levels, as I mentioned. That's kind of one of the most fundamental things that have happened, has happened in esports um, lately. And uh, it spans generations. I mean, there's people, there's teams that are are retired that are in their 70s and even 80s that play there's young people that play it it spans every um every generation and esports are athletes esports is a sport you know this is not muted anymore um and parents are even warming up to gaming and uh you know uh you still hear that parents you know push back but I think they're, you know, I think a lot of the parents are really seeing that it's a good thing for their their children. And then esports and gaming, it's a big business. It's huge and it's growing and it will continue to grow. The COVID-19 pandemic spawned many esports businesses. And um, you know, it's kind of had to change after the pandemic, but you know, it it really made a huge difference in the business. And uh, it's a global ph phenomenon. I've actually interviewed people from all over the world, Malta, Europe, uh, uh, South America, um, Asia, um, uh, Poland. Um, you know, I, I um, have really enjoyed talking with people that were doing some great things in esports, um, Africa as well. Um, and um, it's a global community. People always tell me that they know people all over the world because of esports. And so, you know, that that's kind of one of the best parts about it. But anyway, we've come to an end. And I want to thank all of you for being fans of the wide world of esports. And I invite you to continue to watch these shows. There are many. And um, there will be hours of entertainment and, and you'll learn a lot uh, from all of these shows that I've talked about and more because I couldn't tell you about every episode because there are so many. Um, I encourage you to go to thinktechhawaii.com um, and please donate. Um, uh, we, you know, we do want to uh, continue uh, the cause of providing citizen journalists. Um, and I want to thank. Um, all the people at Think Tech Hawaii who've done such an amazing job at keeping this going. Michael, um, Haley, um, Jay Fidel, uh, Carol Mon Lee, and um, 
so many more and all of the other hosts I've, I've met a lot of incredible people through this program and I encourage you to continue to play and continue to game and uh, do reach out to me on LinkedIn. You can find me on LinkedIn and uh, you can, if you're interested in um, sports, the future of sports, I have a new business called Sports Futurist. We're going to have a website called sportsfuturist.ai. And um, please reach out to us on LinkedIn as well. And we'll see you in the future. Aloha. want to announce that ThinkTech Hawaii is moving into a new phase and will not be producing regular talk shows after April 30th. We will retain our website and YouTube channel and will accept new content on an ad hoc basis. We are also developing a legacy archive program to provide continuing public access to our content. If you can help us cover the costs of the transition and the development of our legacy archive program, please make a donation on thinktechaway.com. Thanks so much. Aloha.